target chase very soon, uh, which is happening next week. But uh, yeah, we're starting to show them how to use the exchanges. We've done all this paper trading and getting into the, the fun, exciting part shortly. And we'll uh, probably touch base uh, with uh, Vicky uh, and myself. We'll just have a quick check in with that. But Marius, we're going to delve into something a little different. And we've had you on uh, the show before, Kelma mm -hmm. Hubbard Studio, and we've talked about a number of things. And it's, it is important to be talking about DeFi, talking about BTAP token, uh, and a couple of very important other things. So thank you for being here. Away you go. Yeah, thank you very much, John. So why is the BTAF token regarded as a DeFi project? So it's actually really simple. Uh, I just quickly wrote up about seven points, and I'll just quickly show them here so that people can actually go through that with me. Now, the first thing that many people need to understand is what is DeFi? People hear about it. They go like, what is DeFi? D, capital D, normally a small E then, then an F, a capital F, like what you see there, DeFi. That's basically stands for decentralized finance. To dumb it down and make it very easy, because for me, I need to understand things really easy. It's simply cutting out the middleman. That's it. Mm. So when you pay somebody now, let's say you live in South Africa and you need to pay somebody in America, what has to happen is you need to go to your bank, log in through the bank's website. You need to get their approval. They would give you a certain code, and that code is the code that you use to pay the person, let's say, in America. Then the American bank gets that. It's normally called the SWIFT code. That SWIFT code then aligns up with the bank. Then there's another middleman there. They can at any time block and stop that money or hold it. This is the problem, guys. They can keep it. You know, if you cannot provide where that money comes from, and in the future, it's going to get a lot more difficult. As a matter of fact, let me say this, John. It's not mm. going to get difficult in the future. It's already difficult. If we were talking about 10 years ago now, and I did this presentation, I would have said, guys, in 10 years from now, it's going to become very difficult to send money. Guys, we are here. You know, we cannot even send money to people in America over $1,000. Let uh, let allow ten thousand. If it's ten thousand dollars, you will struggle. You will struggle. And then it's not just uh, hey, I'm going to be very clever and smart. I'm going to send it in lots of a thousand dollars or nine nine nine. If they see a continuous amount of money coming in, that third party is going to intervene. They're going to let the inland revenue know or the IRS or whoever the taxman is in that country, and they're going to look into us, into this, and then you've got a lot of paperwork to fill in. Can you see where this thing is going? So Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever that person is, way back in 2008, developed Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is not a DeFi project. Remember this now. The difference between DeFi is the, and Bitcoin is basically that Bitcoin is built on its own you know, ecosystem, its own blockchain. That's where it lies. Now, these days, you can use a third party to go and stake Bitcoin and still make money, but you're not effectively really doing the staking on Bitcoin as what you can do with DeFi. But if you look at the first thing here, so DeFi, basically, we cut out the middleman. I can send you, John, BTF tokens immediately. You've got them like within seconds. We never had a middleman. There's nobody to watch you, nobody to check you, nobody to stop you. Whatever you do with that BTF tokens, you can do whatever you want. You can now go and spend it on a global ecosystem anywhere in the world, wherever we grow. And remember, guys, this is the infant stages now. In 10 years, 20 years from now, imagine where the BTF token will be. We're not, we're not declining. We're growing. Little, 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 but at a time, step at a time. How do you climb a thousand steps? This is what the monks normally say, step by step. And as you grow, the value increases as well. You know, the... The usability will increase, more people will use it, et cetera, et cetera. The first thing, if you look at the BTF token, is that we are a decentralized governance, if you really look at that. Point number one and point number five really goes together, but I'm just going to st stick here quickly. Governance is where we as a team, we govern the token. We are looking after you. We will protect you. And guys, the team that I'm working with, I will tell you this in all honesty. I have never had so much faith in people. You know, we are governing it together. No single person can make a decision on their own. It just cannot happen. 
unless everybody approves it, we make decisions. And when we make decisions, we make it for the benefit of you. And uh, we're going to come back to community development quickly, shortly. But the BTF token is the economic activity token for BitcoinTF.com and a global ecosystem. Now, since we started in 2016, we've made a tremendous income. And that income, if you look at what will happen with cryptos over the next 10, 20 years, uh, will be, you know, Bitcoin TAF will just keep on growing. And when we grow, the BTF token grows as well. Look at what happened this last, let's say, seven days. In 2008, when the first Bitcoin conference happened in New York, there was 123 people at that conference. Look what happened a week ago or over this weekend. A former president of the United States walked up on stage and attended the Bitcoin conference and spoke to thousands of people. Imagine this now, five years from now, 10 years from now. And this is why the BTF token and all coins that are built on the DeFi net network, if they are honest, they're ethical, they've got a use case, they are going to grow. Like us, we are growing, we keep growing. Now, BTF token holders can transact with each other on a global scale. I just mentioned that I can send anybody here on this call BTF tokens. It's like a text message. You've got it instantly. We effectively cut out the middleman. The second thing about a DeFi project is the staking ability as well as the yield. Now, I just want to talk about the staking facility and not the yield. Many of you know that you can go and stake and get rewards. You can literally go PR per year. Uh, it's kind of like a, a reward that you get for staking your tokens being part of the BTF network as part of the, the DeFi project. Then we look at cross-chain compatibility. The BTF token is designed to operate across multiple blockchains. And you'll see that in the future, although we are built on the BNB blockchain, you will be able to transact because it's virtual machine operable that you'll be able to transact vice versa through Ethereum. And, and I've seen some of that information come through where it's so easy to basically take your Ethereum and buy BTF tokens and vice versa sell your BTF tokens into Ethereum. That's coming. So you have to remember that we are in the infant stages where the coding that we are writing and developing has never ever done before. It's kind of like the Wild West in a good sense and we are redeveloping everything new. Then you look at security and transparency. When we decided as a team, where are we going to build the BTF token on which blockchain? Is it going to be Solana? Is it going to be Ethereum? Is it going to be Binance? We eventually decided on Binance. So we build it there as a DeFi project so that we can take advantage of BNB. Now at that time point, a year and a half, two years ago, when we launched on BNB, BNB was not the most popular, you know, exchange in the world and not the popular uh, blockchain. But we had a bit of foresight and we saw that in the future, what will happen is that Binance will get back into America. And you see now that the SEC in this week or last week, that they have dropped all the cases against, uh, I believe it's Solana, Ethereum Classic and a whole bunch of other crypto. So they're dropping that. And what's going to happen in the future, although they banned Binance from getting back into America, Binance will go back in America and will become the strongest crypto. We saw that and we decided to act on our data. And you'll see that the price of BNB is going to go to 7,000 for one single BNB. Mark my words, it will happen. So security and transparency for us was really one of the paramount issues. And that's why we built it on the blockchain of Binance. I think Binance, BNB, is one of the most secure blockchains in the world. Then, as I said, yeah, the decentralized governments, when you go back here and you look at decentralized exchanges, the DEXs, you look at the BTF tokens listed on decentralized exchanges. If you go here with me, with my mouse here, you can see that PancakeSwap is our decentralized exchange. Now, you have to remember, decentralized is not Bitmart. Bitmart is a centralized exchange because there's KYC, there's government oversight, but we've given you the option to buy directly from us as the company. You go to BTF token, go 
buybeta.io. You go here to the right, click on buy beta. If you can buy directly from us as the company, decentralized, you get the same amount of tokens. You create a support ticket. Boom. There you go. Your beta tokens is there. Then we can teach and train you how to stake it. Or you can go and buy it on PancakeSwap. Or if you have got USDT or Bitcoin or anything like that, you can send it from your exchange to BitMart. You open an account there and you can buy it on BitMart. Convert it into USDT and then you buy it in BitMart. And then the two last points that I just quickly want to get onto before I'm going to get into BTF token and just quickly give you an update of BTF token as well as what Bitcoin is going to do. You need to see what Bitcoin is going to do, what I believe, especially for people here that are doing scalp trading. The community driven, in the future, the development and direction of the BTF token project will be guided by community input. If you have an X number of BTF tokens, let's say 50,000 or more, we're going to come back to you, let's say in about a year from now, maybe earlier, and we're going to say, let's create a group and we bring people in that group. And then as a group, we're going to make decisions about governance, about how do we uh, drive the project? What developments do we do? Are we going to go and create a payment system, for example? I'm just hinting to certain things there, you know, we are busy with the uh, uh, getting a financial license for BDF token, whether we're going to get it or not is up to, you know, we'll see what happens there. But there's a lot of things that we are working on, plenty of stuff that I wish I can tell you. But these things take a lot of time, a lot of effort just to get government approval and getting those licenses. Are we going to expand? And this brings us here to the ecosystem. The BTF token is part of a growing ecosystem that uh, includes partnerships, integrations with other DeFi projects, expanding its use case and applications. For example, are we going to go and create a payment system? Are we going to incorporate with other payment systems? Are we going to go and launch the BTF token on other websites that also do what we do, where you can take the BTF token and pay for subscriptions, certain products? Are we going to launch that potentially on you know, betting websites, you know, where people bet, where people do things on websites, where they play games. Uh, you know, these things are going to explode and we cannot exclude ourselves from that growing ecosystem, the expansion. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go quickly here to the BTF token, and then I'm going to show you what Bitcoin is going to do directly after this. Now, we are fortunate enough, one of the very few coins you can see here we bottomed here most coins are trading about here i kid you not go and have a look at theta for example theta bottomed and is trading at 1.4 and it bottomed at 0 0.9 let's say one dollar so theta is up 80 90 percent but look what's happening with the beta token now, if you look at the BTF token and you compare this even with BNB, I'm not going to do it now, but I'll just give you a indication. If you go right from this bottom here and you go right up to the top there, that top where it was, that's a, a thousand, what is that? A thousand two hundred and eighty three percent. I believe that BNB has made about three hundred percent. So the BTF token, although it runs on the blockchain of BNB and follows the chart pattern of BNB, is outperforming BNB. Now, please remember that when I talk about this, the BTF token is a DeFi project. It's not intended really to work at the price here. We're not a financial instrument, okay? So I'm not enticing you to buy. It's just a caveat. Just read what it says here on the bottom uh, because we don't really want to promote this as, hey, buy this, you can make a lot of money. We're not doing that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you quickly, according to my algorithm data in BitcoinTaf.com, we show that we will go to a top there, you know, a top there, a down cycle year, down cycle year, a massive breakout year past that point. We can actually move that arrow on. And we basically now in the next phase of a down cycle and the next phase of a breakout. So what will happen here is, if you look at where we are here, that arrow is about there. In, in terms of algorithm data, remember these are mathematical equations. Now what has happened here, pay close attention here. You get this multi swing upwards. Can you see what happened there? Can you see what happened here? Can you see what's about to happen there? I believe that we can go up here to about a dollar. 
and more. Okay, that'll be really stunning if that happens. Now, again, please remember, read the, the data here. We're not promoting it as a price. Let's have a look quickly what Bitcoin is going to do. Then I'm going to hand over to you, John. All you need Perfect. to look at is the Bitcoin CME futures. CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. What happens here is, let me just zoom in. I've got it here on the four hour. I'm going to go back to Friday, 12 here. On Friday, 12 o'clock, midday. Between midday, two, three o'clock. All around the world, there were orders placed. And those orders came there on a Friday. And many of these were short orders, meaning they expected that the market, when it opens on Monday, is going to drop. On Saturday, the day after they placed the orders, you all saw what happened with Donald Trump. He stood there, he moved his head with one inch bullet pass through his ear, boom, he did not die. Instead of the market dropping, and we've got all this data in long-term trade where we spoke about this, this is going to happen, and by supernatural intervention, the market's going to go upwards, and look what happened. On Monday, when the market opened, the market didn't drop, and those people were caught with their pants down. So now what has to happen, or what happened, is that the market opened higher, and the short orders, not just in Bitcoin, across the board, guys. You know, you look at some stocks, world stocks, that also got shorted. So somebody had the inside info. Now, we're not yet to talk about politics, but I want to show you what's going to happen potentially in Bitcoin. Now, these people that manipulate the markets here, because this will help you, what I'm going to show you now, especially in scalp trading. So what has happened is that the market then went up into a form of a rising wedge. Now, normally what happens is, is that these positions must be closed. If it doesn't close in the next week or 10 days, they're going to lose all their money here. And there's about $1.3 billion lying in Bitcoin that they will lose if the market now suddenly turns around and just go upwards. So my expectation is here, if you are trading, scalp trading, very important to look at where do you enter. Enter when we have a vertical drop down to about 58,000. Then what happens is the market turns the bottom here and then it goes up. This is just an idea. It may not play out, but I can tell you, I have seen this in the past and I've showed Wendy as well. Every single, if you go back, I'm just going to show you one of them. Here is one, for example. This one here. Also on a Friday, market got closed. Uh, on a Friday, Monday market opened higher. What happened is they had to run the market up, rising wedge, okay? Drop the market. And look where they dropped it into. Just so that they can close their positions there. And then suddenly the market goes up. I'm not going to show you the other ones. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time here. But for us that are doing scalp trading, I love doing it. I love doing day trading. Skull trading is brilliant. I just made some money today with trading some, some coins there by using the indicator, Wendy, and you saw that, you know, I use that. I do not trade without the indicator, you know, the huddle fire. So what I'm saying here is expect maybe some form of a drop here, 200 MA, maybe again, just the consolidation and then perhaps a pullback. Other than that, maybe just a vertical drop down. So that said, over to you. Thank you very much, John. That is amazing. Thank you for such great insight as well around so much of that, especially around DeFi itself and why um, it is so feasible <clears throat> in terms of uh, the governance and not having to worry about third parties, uh, et cetera. And our token being a utility token, a DeFi global payment solution, uh, it is a great example of that. And we're going to be looking more into that now with Wendy, with other great examples around DeFi as well. But Maris, thank you for that. And the extra bit of information as well. Everybody on the call, I'm sure, is very appreciative um, of your time and your insight and your technical analysis around that. Exciting times that we're living in. 